Oh, that's creepy. That hammer, that view. Who would have known that bluegrass and metal is a thing? What? It's perfect for you. Ah, she's like singing out of my soul. Sometimes we get lost in our own little world, but it's all so much bigger than we realize. I have a feeling this one's going to go viral, and I can't wait to listen to it with you. Welcome to the Ultimate YouTube channel, all about world music and psychology. My name is Rosalie, and I'm excited to check this one out with you. The Native Howl. No idea who this band is. It was put on YouTube by the Sumerian Records YouTube channel. This one's called Mercy featuring Lizzie Hale. I've only listened to one song featuring Lizzie Hale so far. It was the Who Band featuring Lizzie Hale, the woman's song. It was epic. And this song, the Native Howl song Mercy, was put out just a few days ago. And uh, shout out to my patron, my subscriber and supporter, Troy, who brought this to my attention. I think he may be onto something. This may very well go viral, and I want to check it out with you. Real quick about the Native Howl. Amazing name, by the way. The Native Howl, to me, just because we're all about psychology, philosophy, and such, when I hear a title or a band name like that, I'm thinking raw music. I'm thinking passion. I'm thinking references to nature, right? The Howl making me think of wolves, something that's... Raw, real. Troy said his vocals can peel paint in an awesome way. Okay, I'm, I'm really intrigued. And it turns out they're from Leonard, Michigan. Are you ready? Mercy. That word, too, has me intrigued because we know of the word mercy often in either. Please have mercy on me. You got a hold on me. Please have mercy on my heart. And then, you know, the song mercy in like religious songs, right? This idea of God have mercy on me. Be gracious with my soul or speaking to a loved one. Subscribe. Welcome to the Ultimate YouTube channel. We go deep, and I'm happy you're here. Let's check it out. There's a willow leaves on the willow trees. Keep it shaking. Her voice is amazing. Let sleeping dogs lie in the burning sun. His voice is raw, like. As the vulture spin and the culture sin, lay wait to all we've come to know and love. In the honor and truth of my longing, the truth that is veracity we dream of. So the broken smiles and the token. Okay, guys, let me let me stop for just a second. There is so much passion here. I mean, their facial expressions are so fitting to the intensity they're bringing, right? All these grimaces and facial expressions that bring a level of intensity. The whole feeling is obviously very bluegrassy, country. You got the barn, you got the rain in the background. Beautiful cinematography of the music video. Them standing there like preacher style, right? As if they're preaching in some church, barn church. Her with that beautiful headpiece almost looking veil-like, but what we would often find, you know, um, churchgoers, women in churches to, to possibly wear, maybe back in the day, even more so than nowadays, depending on the church, depending on the de denomination and the circles, even today still, wearing that headpiece hat, um, but here dressed in black as if perhaps a funeral fitting to that 
that coffin that was carried in in the beginning almost looked like the coffin was opened and she came walking out of it, if I saw correctly. Her now standing in the front also preaching or looking like she's preaching. His voice, the rasp, that raw vibe is crazy. Beautiful compliment to her voice and um, the rasp and the, the aggression and intensity that she brings with her vocal timbre. We'll talk about the lyrics in a second. But so far, the whole feeling is very, very raw, intense, and passionate. And it's the references about mercy, have mercy on my soul, also to me are fitting with what we often find themes to be in country music and in bluegrass. The instrumentation, instruments we're finding here, we got the banjo, um, beautiful sound, in my opinion, brings a lot of warmth, brings, we got the, uh, I'm trying to see what the other sound was the musical washboard shakers and scrapers sounds like there's shakers and the musical washboard the scraping going on also adds a lot of raw feeling here we got we got the bass that guitar riff that he keeps playing is ridiculous it's amazing let me keep listening here we go okay Okay. The crescendo here is awesome. That build up. creepy that hammer that view as if we're the ones being nailed into the coffin or the coffin being nailed shut oh gosh or slaughtered for that matter that's oh that's creepy listen guys i love the fact that i keep learning not only different bands music from different countries various cultures and elements but also various music genres and i am amazed that there is such a thing as bluegrass country meets metal I didn't expect this. I thought this was going to be your bluegrass country vibe, and it started very much so that way, right? We got the banjo, we got that washboard, we got the scrubbing, we got the shakers, we got bass, we got some drums, but the buildup of the song made it for quite the epic ride. A lot of crescendo, a lot of buildup to the level of complete intensity, and there was a lot going on from the timber of their voice, that growl, the rasp, a beautiful compliment, complimentation here to the lyrics being quite interesting, to then taking off going full on metal, screams, growls, the head banging, the coffin vibe, them standing in the dark looking at each other. We know something bad happened. Even the lyrics switching from God have mercy on us to God have mercy on you. Really creepy and terrifying. Um, and the willow leaves, as the willow leaves on the willow trees, keep it shaking as they do. Cool rhyme here, cool literary art. I'm going to sidestep him over this mountain and walk on waters blue. Sidestepping that reference to dancing, um, line dancing we find in country music and in bluegrass. Over this mountain, walk on waters blue. Beautiful words here, beautiful literary art. All very feeding, fitting thematically to bluegrass country music because the, cretin, the Cretans line, the police spy, waiting for a miracle to come their way when they could and should have easily turned their head onto the sky and pray. Hold on. The, what are the, the Cretans? Are those the Cretan? I said it right. A stupid person. 
person whose mental and physical development has been impaired by a deficiency. Okay. German is my first language. So when you find me either mispronouncing something or still learning and looking up words, that's, that's why I grew up bilingual, but my, I born and raised in Germany. So that's my first language. All my education up until college was in, in German and uh, it's I'm still learning as I go. Cretans and, and the police, the Cretans lie and the police spy waiting for a miracle to come their way when they could and should have easily turned their head under the sky and pray. And those references of turning to the sky and praying fitting to the chorus singing about Father, please have mercy for what we've done. Father, as in referring to God, praying for mercy, which we often find being done in church and in religious circles. Them in that barn, in that gloomy, grainy barn looking like they're preaching in the in the video let sleeping dogs lie in the burning sun and letting a sleeping dog lie in the burning sun also fitting to bluegrass and country when we think of themes and imagery and what we find often the topics to be in country songs in my opinion of course there's a variety of, of themes but also the idiom of saying let a sleep sleeping dog lie this reference of let it be right like just don't wake the sleeping dog maybe this idea of stop messing with things, right? Let, let it be in the burning sun. Um, as the vultures spin and the cultures sin, lay waste to all we've come to know and love. Also interesting, right? When something is dying, vultures start circling. That rhyme between spin and sin and sin, also a reference fitting to that whole theme of church and God having mercy. Now, honor and truth is a mile long in the tooth. It's veracity we're dreaming of. So the broken smiles... Interesting that a reference to a tooth and the broken smile, token milestones come to make us all just what we are. So we squeeze the souls snugly into the molds, unfit to harness but a shooting star. Dang! Oh my gosh! Squeezing souls into snugly molds to me, maybe burying people in coffins, also fitting to the music video. Unfit to harness but a shooting star. And shooting stars are dying stars, so that reference to death and coffins is fitting also we pray father please have mercy for what they've done that lying dogs burn in the sleeping sun burn him up here we go and then they say now the willow leaves once as thick as thieves wow earlier in the beginning it said the willow leaves but the lyrics don't say leaves the willow leaves on the willow trees okay the willow is often looked at also as that mourning tree right it looks like tears coming down it looks like a tree that's mourning and grieving fitting to Again, the idea of death or killing someone. The willow leaves, once as thick as thieves, wilt away with all our hopes and dreams. And this, too, is really poetic and can be taken various ways. Personally, I'm thinking here of this concept of life and death and how things that used to be thick as thieves, leaves being luscious and green, withering away things dying, just like our hopes and dreams. It is a reference to me of death and how all things fade. It is possibly also the death of not necessarily just literally our own death and the death of loved ones, but the things that we bury, the things that we kill, where we want sleeping dogs to stay lying down, where we want to, where we maybe have caused harm or caused death in our relationship with our words, right? When there's divorce, when there's separation, friendship, romantically, whatever, there's pain involved. There's things that have been done, right? Bodies that have been buried where sometimes we may be more comfortable with letting the sleeping dog lie. We want to just let it all burn up. We need mercy because of what we've done, the sins we've committed, because things are fading away, our hopes and dreams, what we thought life was going to be like, or what we thought our marriage was going to look like, or relationships, or yeah, the dreams and aspirations we had as young people, the things that were thick as thieves, right? People in their youth, we have all these dreams and visions and the tree is luscious, the tree of life in our own life, the ideas and goals we have. And then we become adults and life is quite hard and we realize, dang, it's all different than I expected. And we start making mistakes and we try to either cover them up or bury things. A lot of ways we can interpret this, in my opinion. A shadowy voice gives illusion a choice, this illusion of having a choice, right? This shadowy voice makes you think you have a choice. All the silence, the endurance screams. And now things are getting darker and more creepy, but also fitting to what's happening in the music video and the crescendo and the rasp and the intensity that they're bringing in here vocally. We're going from a lot of rasp and a lot of, a lot of uh, intensity, that, a lot of that country bluegrass, to now taking it into that metal vibe, in my opinion. So we face the dawn with a pistol drawn. Repugnance burning in our soul. It, it, repugnance being intense disgust. 
and the fury at hand storms from jury to stand. Earlier, referring to police, um, now speaking of jury, storms from jury to stand. Okay, going from jury perhaps being... Well, there's a couple of ways I'm seeing this. The jury, when they stand up to declare their verdict, but also going from jury to stand, going from the place where you are the one casting the judgment to being on the stand, being the one being judged. And that fitting is fitting, too, to that lingo of God have mercy on me and then God have mercy on them. As we draw near to the final toll, again, perhaps death, our death, we sing, Father, we, don't, we won't have mercy for what you've done. Oh, dang. Father will never forgive you for what you've done. Father, I'll never forget, forgive you for what you've done. God dang. Okay, and now it's changing again. Not only God have mercy on us or on them, now we're saying, Father, we won't have mercy for what you've done. What is this? Is this a shaking the hand at God, going through life, and all that comes with it, our own mortality, our own burial in sight, to the things we do to others, sometimes literally, sometimes in words and actions and our thoughts, where we bury others, where we kill others, where we are the ones driving the nail into the coffin of others, to the own coffin that we're headed for and the dreams that die, that willow, right, those thick leaves that now fall, to perhaps shaking our fist at God, at the Father, saying we won't have mercy on you or forgive you for what you've done, Perhaps saying, why are you letting us die? Maybe dealing with the plight of death and saying, I'll never forgive you, as in, why are you, let it, why are you letting me die? And in the music video, the view from the ground up to the, the band hammering down as if perhaps killing someone, smashing someone, or perhaps driving the nails into the coffin, that type of view is quite scary and was quite sombering because... If you're looking up, well, for one, we're still alive to perceive this. When you're dead, you don't, you don't see it. You don't, you're not there to witness it, f- as far as we know. But the view changed. It's this perception. It's this, it's this perception that changed from seeing the men standing on the grass, looking at each other very eerily as if they've done something really bad, as if they're burying someone or something, to now being the person in the ground. It's a very profound song. This, to me, is some country songs, some songs that are, and I say country loosely, that term. I say bluegrass loosely. Some songs or themes we find in the world of country and bluegrass and such seem very straightforward, right? It may be about someone's dying dog, girlfriend, marriage, life, home, kids, partying, beer. Then you have type of, the type of songs that dive deeper in some of the themes that we deal with as people. And then you have songs, and I would say that's, this one is a, an example of that, where you're diving so deep and poetically into matters that are relatable to all of us, but you have to dive deep to decipher them. Not in the sense of, oh, this is so cryptic, what, this could, what could this possibly mean? But in the sense of it could mean different things to all of us. Metalsucks.net. <laughs> says a unique sound and approach to the mixing of bluegrass and heavy metal. Yep. They go on tour with Clutch. I was just reacting to Clutch a few months ago on my second channel, Rosalie Reacts. Check that out if you're interested. And it is, it deals with murder. Mercy was written as our original thrashgrass anthem. Is that a genre? Thrashgrass? To have our vocal hero Lizzie Hale singing on it is nothing short of a dream come true. Mercy's subtly, Mercy's, Mercy subtly tells the story of infamous Boston gangster Whitley Bulger and the dichotomy of dark and light between him and his disgraced politician brother William. Okay. While pulling from additional themes of organized religion and corruption, the music's beds, the music beds growth and intensity throughout attempts to paint the process of all of all evil and wrongdoing slowly being brought to light. Okay. So the infamous Boston gangster Whitley Bulger, did I say his name right? was an American organized crime boss who led the Winter Hill Gang in the Winter Hill neighborhood of Somerville. He was born in 1921, died 2018. Okay. It was a largely Irish mob in Boston from the 1970s through the 1990s. Okay. I'm glad I looked this up. So this video is a reference to him, to that gangster, and that dichotomy of dark and light between him and his disgraced politician brother, William. 
but also pulling themes of religion, right? We saw the preaching in the barn. We saw references to Father Have Mercy and speaking of corruption, which we also often find in religion, but it also fits to the politician brother here, a lot of corruption in politics as well as the gangster. And we find that, right? A lot of times when it comes to gangs and mobs and mafia, we also find a lot of ties to politics and police, right? Turning a blind eye to things, very much being part of the corruption. That is still the case today, cartel and different organizations where police and politicians are heavily involved from human trafficking and many other things where we know that there's a lot of corruption going on. But it's interesting to use religion as a reference because there too is a lot of corruption and then shedding light on that dichotomy, as it says here, well on metalsucks.net between the dark and the light of that and that evil being brought to light. And that is fitting because even the, even the crescendo and the intensity buildup that was happening in the song fits to that evil coming to light. It went from strong bluegrass feeling to, or as I'm reading here, thrash grass anthem. That's so cool. All these things I'm learning to now going full on metal, right? Evil rearing his head. It's intense. It's not a beautiful classical musical composition of butterflies and skittle farting unicorns. We're not talking about gentle violin strings, right? Different musical instruments, different musical compilations, they send a different message. Message, And here, fitting to bring it full-on metal to talk about death and evil. But it's funny how we interpret things various in various ways. Because reading this just now sheds a whole new light on the whole song for me. And I'm like, okay, this makes a lot of sense. And still amazingly poetic song and a lot of literary art to tell a story like this in a way that it's not... So black and white and in your face who this is about and what it's about. And that takes a lot of skill to write a song where you're telling a story in a way that it is about events in the past. It is about general themes, but it is also so profound that you can interpret it and make it personal. And for me, what I was sharing with you prior is what I'm pulling out of it. This concept of life and death and the perspective switch from being the ones asking for mercy for oneself to now asking for others, to now addressing the Father and saying we won't have mercy on what you've done, but also dealing with this concept of the coffin and that weeping willow and change, the way that things that were thick as thieves are now fading away, hopes and dreams fading away. And that, now knowing a little more about the story, is, makes sense too. Being as thick as thieves, also another idiom where you're really tight with someone, perhaps the two brothers, right? Um, being really tight and hopes and dreams now fading, things dying or having the illusion of a choice, thinking you have a choice and not realizing the system is so corrupt, things are so corrupt, we don't really have a choice. There's a whole lot of ways to interpret this, but what skill to write a song to that degree where you're telling story, but you're still bringing people something that's so artistic that they can make their own. And who would have known that bluegrass and metal is a thing? What? What do you think? Subscribe, join the ride. I have lots more content coming for you and lots more you can explore. Check out my playlists and I'll see you on the next ride. If you want to make a donate, if you want to make a suggestion via donation, make, make sure to check out buymeacoffee.com forward slash Rosalie Elliott, link below in the description. And make sure to read the instructions on what you can do to make a suggestion via donation. I'll see you on the next ride. Ayo!